which was a very intense relationship. She even uh, you treated me like her own daughter and her husband. So I was sort of like became a family member, which sometimes happens in you know interaction between anthropologists and other peoples. So I started, I, when I wrote Diabetes Jackpot, it became just a dialogue between me and Molly Root, this Yurok woman who I've worked with for many, many years. And so, in me, and it's called Diabetes Jackpot because she, she, com, she would compare herself to a, uh, a slot machine and popping pills like dimes and quarters. <laughs> And that she would be lucky if one day she popped a pill like a coin and her diabetes, and she hit the jackpot. Her diabetes would go away forever. <laughs> so really, really insightful. And in and then diabetes jackpot, the people in the apocalypses of time and the body on Guarani children in, in Brazil also. And so in the ones that I've underlined here, and now most recently, the color red on the Shavanti people in central Brazil, um, and then most recently just started working on Yurok women and Afro men, I saw that I really had to uh, define my character as you start writing plays, you do character definition. And so I realized that I had to define very clearly my position as either an anthropologist, or sometimes as a friend, like I said, or a mother, or a sister, and so in doing that, uh, I, I think a lot of nuances of the relationship between anthropologists and now their partners in uh, community research became very clear. And what kind of relationship is it that today we can um, negotiate? That's on the basis of negotiation. So I'll tell you a little bit more about these plays before we get to uh, Yurok Women and Afro Men. So May Your Body Lay Naked on Mother Earth, which is very controversial. And it's about a Yurok medicine woman, Pekwan, uh, who falls in love with Wotek, who's a Yurok e shaman, and he travels in the conduits and the cyber uh, space of this hypothetical <coughs> American, American University. And however, their, their bodies are in cyber boxes in a basement, a very damp, dark basement. And they meet when the, the boxes are stacked up one upon the other, and their, the bones collide, and they meet, and they fall in love. So um, the main characters in this place, so it's based on true events, but there is, you know, and even the character of the E. Shannon with the Speedo suit and everything, uh, traveling around and bringing information to Pequon, who's a Yurok, a traditional Yurok medicine woman, and who works to heal the bodies and to be able to liberate them from this basement. So right here, we have Dr. Arcane, who's this hardcore scientist who does not want to repatriate any of the bodies. And so I'm not present here, but you know I help, um, let's say, produce this character in my imagination. And the argument that we're making in this play is that repa repatriation is a human right. It was performed at the uh, uh, AAA meeting in, uh, what year was it, 2008. And uh, Nathan here was Dr. R. Kane, so that was really interesting. Diabetes jackpot, singing shells, pills, and coins. This is a, a photo of Molly Root in the 1950s. And this was stage read at the same AAA in another panel, um, Indigenous Subjects, Diabetes Rights, and Advocacy Practices. And it was also field tested at the 17th International Creative Drama, Drama and Education Seminar in, in Congress in, in Turkey, is Istanbul, last year by one of our grad students at San Francisco State. We were invited, but I couldn't go, so she went. And so we're already sort of field testing using some of Auguste Wall's exercises. <coughs> Another play that I mentioned, to Pi Guarani Apocalypses <coughs> of Time and the Body, when Guarani children of southern Brazil subvert the tribe's cultural order in their everyday role-playing activities, claiming that the mythic paradise land without evil can be a mundane reality. All of these plays are online at um, uh, one of our websites, two of our websites at San Francisco State, humanrights.sfsu.edu, 
and write to know.sfsu.edu. They're the full versions of all of these plays. <clears throat> Finally, one that I'm working on right now as we speak, Flowers and Fruits of the Brazilian Savannah in the Chavante Experimental Kitchen. It's, it's a, it was a UN project. I wrote a small grant to the UN Development Program, and we got about $50,000 and developed this a project, a beautiful project in mapping and documenting the flowers and fruits of the Brazilian uh, savanna. And I call it the color red because this, when you push for human rights, there's always backlash, always, always. And so the introduction of the language of human rights in central Brazil produced a lot of uh, retaliation by the local farmers and the missionaries. And so there was actually an assassination that took place there so this play tells the story of Joaquim Maravizuru, who left home to go fishing and never came back. And so that's why it's called The Color Red, because the, the, his blood seeped into the earth, and all of the, the plants and the flowers became red. So it's pretty beautiful. And in this narrative uh, here, that's when the Joker, who uh, for in all of the chapters of this handbook, Acting for the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, that was sort of the joker, but then I made myself into the joker. This is a drawing by one of my, my, my sons drew that. And so I became, for the first time in, in one of these plays, the joker, the person who is there to uh, provoke people and to raise questions and to bring up, for example, how I was feeling in it during this situation. So it really positions me in a completely different light in terms of narrating this, this event in the form of uh, theater. So, like I said, so the Joker is the master of ceremonies or the director of the ceremonies, uh, as Auguste Boal uh, defined him. And in more specifically, Auguste Boal defines the Joker as, he, he took that idea from like the wild card, actually uh, the Joker in a deck of cards uh, just as the wild card is not tied down to a specific suit or value, neither is the teal, here in the oppressed joker, tied down to an allegiance to performer, spectator, or any one interpretation of events, also used as a verb to joke. So it's been uh, in, in, in using the joker to write the color red, uh, the positionality of the anthropologist as an advocate for indigenous people's rights really comes out in another light and a lot of uh, the issues and the troubles that uh, come with that position. So finally, in New York Women and Afro Man, which I just began thinking of it as a theater play, we have both the protagonists and the antagonists as any theater I guess a play uh, constructs the storyline. And the protagonists are the Iraq women. And here's the Iraq woman. This picture was taken in 1910. It's a very mm. sort of well-known, famous picture who married a Portuguese man. And by an extreme coincidence, because of these marriages between Iraq women and Portuguese men, actually, and I'm of Portuguese ancestry, there's a Portuguese-speaking community on the Iraq Indian Reservation of all places. So that's one of the reasons why when I first got there, being from Brazil, speaking Portuguese, and then there was a Portuguese, sort of Portuguese family. So this all sort of um, made, let's say, the perspective of my working with the people uh, much more yeah. acceptable. Uh, rather than deny me altogether the right to, to, or not the right, the opportunity to work there. And here we have, here's a Kroger, Alfred Kroger and Ish in one of the very famous pictures. So I guess in the play, the antagonists are the anthro men, the anthropologists and, and the psychoanalysts who joined forces to advance this theory of uh, Iraqinality. So main characters in the play now are, so we have Kroger, uh, Eric Erickson, who's famous child psychologist and who collaborated with Kroger in advancing the theory of Yurok anality. Uh, Bulgarian psychoanalyst Raheim, and you know, I'll talk more about it in later, and others. And the three Yurok women, amongst others that I will introduce to you briefly today, are Lucy Thompson. Lucy Thompson uh, wrote um, to the American Indian reminiscences of 
a Yurok, to the American Indian, Reminiscences of a Yurok Woman in 1916. She wrote, this was published again in 19, 